When you have a dark, dated den, the only real solution is to lighten, brighten, and update. You need to think about it or you're convinced that that's good. I've been helping homeowners improve their home for a lot of years. They think it's intimidating, but it actually it can be a lot of fun. And we're here to help. Here you go. <laughs> Dad's the expert, but I've learned a few things along the way. Practical, realistic home improvement information is what today's homeowner is all about. Six months ago, Neil and Whitney Christopher moved into this 40-year-old home with their children, Landry and Eliza. My son's always said that he wanted to live in a big white house, and we pulled up, and there's the big white house. White house. And then when we got inside, we were like, ooh. A little bit of renovations to be done, but it has the space, it has the yard, it's on a cul-de-sac, it's what we wanted for our kids. Then when we left, Landry said, Mom, I can imagine you downstairs cooking me bacon. Yes. And that, that sealed the deal for us. Yeah. yeah. But this dark day to den is a problem that even bacon can't solve. It's this big wooden room, and my first thought was like, yes, I can finally have that man cave library feel. And then the more we kind of sat with it, we realized it's a living room. It's meant to be lived in. We have two kids. It's not meant to be this formal masculine room that nobody touches. So we're really wanting to liven it up, lighten it up, and make it more livable. It's just dated. It needs to be updated. Right. You've got the valances. You've got the trim work. You've got the dark ceilings. You've got the outdated red brick fireplace and the brass insert. How do you update one piece without having to touch everything? And the reality is, is you, you can't. So that's the challenge for us when we arrive to check out the room. Hey, good to see you again. All right, great, great. Good to see you. Hope y'all are ready to flash back. <laughs> Head on over here. Yes, it is a little bit of a flashback, <laughs> but most of the time when you see these dark dens like this, you have the old traditional paneling with grooves, but yeah, this, this, is, a, this is like cabinetry in here. It's dark, but it's not bad looking. Uh -huh. You know, the quality of this room is amazing. I can see where she would be a bit hesitant to change it, but boy, is it out of date. Yeah, it definitely puts a time stamp on when this room was <laughs> it sure done. Does. Yeah, I actually really like the design style. It's kind of um, craftsman, I guess, right. if you will, uh -huh. but this isn't a craftsman house and this isn't a library. So I would love to figure out a way to kind of keep some of that aesthetic mm -hmm. and not just so get rid of it completely. So you don't mind painting some of it. My first thought, <laughs> I could warm up my to first it. thought is to just paint the inside panels themselves and leave the trim. So you right. get that, you get to keep the warmth of the wood, right? but you're lightening up the walls. I could, I could just think about it. Well, Neil, what do you think? What do you think about uh, this whole side of the room? Well, obviously I have an issue with the TV. Everything technology-wise is just kind of sitting out in the open and it looks pretty bad. I unloaded it when we moved in and sat it there and it has sat there ever since, so. That's true. I'd love to put it up above the mantel, uh, but I don't really know what's behind there and it yeah. scares me. I'm pretty sure it's brick and then I don't want to get into drilling into brick and doing all of that stuff, so. We're not electricians. Or <laughs> brick masons. <laughs> or either. <laughs> Obviously, the this, this mantle's too narrow for us that's, to get. That's a little petite for this yeah. man's yeah. room here, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> and this outdated brass, I don't even know what you call these. Yeah. I mean, uh, golden brass is coming back, but that's just. But it's still, yeah. yeah. It, won't right. be, it won't come back that far. No. So. <laughs> okay, so if you paint the walls, would you want to paint the bricks? Yes. Well, there's a lot of ways of lightening that up. There's some other techniques. Some washes that, uh, or something yeah. you could uh -huh. do where yeah. you still get maybe a little bit of the red coming through yeah. to tie into the wood. If, if you guys are comfortable with that approach on the wall, right? we could really kind of jumpstart this process a little bit if you're willing to do a lot of taping. I don't know how to tape. <laughs> okay, we'll show you. While I show Neil how to mask the trim, Chelsea and Whitney are brainstorming about what to mask. So we were thinking like, what if we left this wooden and then painted the cabinet Bottom down? Half. So then you still have yeah. some of the wood coming mm -hmm. over and we don't lose I like that. all Looks of like that. Looks like a countertop or whatever. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Eventually it's time to stop talking about masking and do it. I think Whitney and Neil were probably panicking a little bit when we gave them this big stack of tape and said, have a good night, see you tomorrow. <laughs> that wasn't very nice of us. <laughs> 
It looks like we did a lot, but we still got a lot left. And I hate tape. <laughs> it's a four letter word in our house now, tape. I think I'm kind of starting to like the green and maybe we should just uh, leave it that way. Ninja Turtle style. Or just paint it all white. Milk crates have been used for years for storing record albums and books and of course kids toys. Here are a bunch of old toys they found. I thought I'd donate them to my niece. I thought she might enjoy playing with them. But rather than giving her just an open crate, I thought I could convert it into a child's seat. So I took a piece of fabric. This was actually a canvas drop cloth. And I laid it out on a table, then put on a piece of two and a half inch thick foam. Top that with a piece of plywood cut to slightly larger than the dimensions of the crate. Then I stapled the fabric in place, and then I put in four cleats. I screwed four cleats to the underside of the cushion. And those cleats are perfect to keep this cushion in place. Without the cleats, this could slide right off. So just four little simple cleats cut out of one by twos, sit right on there. Now she has a comfortable place to sit and a great way to store her toys. We're helping Neil and Whitney update their dark, dated den. They've gotten things started by clearing the room and masking the paneling the night before we arrived to start work. Neil, looks like you and Whitney did a pretty good job here. It's probably took, what, at least an hour? More like six. <laughs> are are y'all still talking right now? I'm happy that he's talking to me because this was all my idea to begin with. So, oh, I got you. Yeah. OK. Next, we cover up the floors to protect them from paint. When you paint these walls, I'll bet that alone is going to help a lot. You notice I said, when you paint the when walls. When I paint the walls. You, you hear that? They picked up on that. I'm big enough what you're putting down, Danny. It's called today's homeowner for a reason. Yeah, I'm starting to see why they call it today's homeowner, because it's definitely about us. The first big chore is painting the ceiling. While Whitney cuts in, Neil gets familiar with the roller. He also gets a little paint on himself. You look so manly right now in your flannel. <laughs> I like flannel shirts. She loves them. She likes me in flannel shirts. He will never wear them. So I got him a new shirt. And he wore them on purpose this week so he could ruin them. Yeah. See? Pretty yeah. much. Meanwhile, Chelsea and I began removing the trim over the fireplace before that paneling comes down. Now, the reason we're taking the paneling down here above the mantel is because we want to hang a television here, and there's no way we can hang a TV on something that flimsy. So I suspect that I'll find a wall of bricks with some type of furring strip on it. So let's see what we're going to find here. As soon as I see that come off, I got really excited. <laughs> that was unexpected, except now. How to run electrical to hang the TV. I'm not real sure. Yeah. Yeah. Did you really want a TV up there? Well, it made Whitney's dreams come true to have brick above the mantle, but right. it also made it harder to hide the wires. It's a little more complicated. Is there any way to run something up like under a mantle and then when we do like a trim piece hanging down, you wouldn't see it yeah. and then drill well, up? We've got, we've got that, that's one of the options also the um, behind the crown mold. Pulling those masonry nails out of that concrete, you know, you always have to be careful with them. Dang. That bounced off the top of my head. Ow. Oh, is oh. that what that scratch is? That still hurts. Put my glasses on, but I really needed a hard hit. Okay, you wanted this out of here as much as anything, huh? Let's go. Right. Get it gone. Close your eyes. Okay, open your eyes. So I know brass is making a comeback, but that screen's never, never coming back into my home. Before Neil starts the second coat of ceiling paint, we give him a spray suit to minimize the damage. He could have done it a little earlier. All right, here's she's some fancy gloves. Okay. And we're going to sand all the paneling that we're going to paint. But instead of using a sander, we're going to use liquid sandpaper, or liquid. Right. And we rub it on. And it kind of, it basically deglosses it and just helps the paneling accept paint. We're using liquid sandpaper instead of actually sanding because the walls are in really good shape, but also there won't be any dust involved, which is nice since we're in the middle of Whitney and Neil's house. The stuff's not very glossy to begin with, which is nice. We talked a little bit about the mantle, but we haven't really made a determination. I have a suggestion. All right. Okay, so you want it to make it look a little more stately, a little larger. So one idea would be 
to take this crown and we'd have to do a little bit of blocking, but that's one look there. Yeah. Um, we could then take a smaller molding, put it right under here, and that provides the chase for all the wires. Okay. We can drill through the corbels to, to run it through. Okay. So you could have this under there and then this out here. You need to think about it or are you convinced that that's good? I'm good with it. Okay, back to work. You know, Dan, sadly, this is a common occurrence in my household because invariably we will strip out a nut or a bolt and then the sockets that are supposed to fit don't fit anymore. They just spin. But you have a solution for me, don't well, you? Well, Husky actually has a solution. <laughs> it's a dual action extractor for bolts and nuts. And I'll show you how they work. Show me. The inside of the extractor itself will actually grab onto the nut and bolt. Now, it is tapered on the inside, right? So it is. So it doesn't hit it right away. It'll get it up it one helps inch, grab. up in there. Okay, that was down there pretty tight. Mm-hmm. And guess what? Look at there. That came all the way off. Spinning like a top. But say you that? had a situation where you didn't have another replacement nut and you had to reinstall it. Guess what? We can go the opposite way. I love that. This is great, Dan. You know, this is the perfect solution to a very common problem. We're trying to make Neil and Whitney's family room less dark and dated, and nothing dates a room like these curved balances. And the thing that's kind of odd here is this room is so symmetrical with parallel lines everywhere, not a curve in sight. I think this will make a big difference. I'm cutting the long straight line with a circular saw before I finish the cut with a jigsaw. Finally, we're ready to spray the walls. You want to keep the same distance away from the wall as you're going across. How far away from the wall are we? Six, Six to eight inches, yeah. But I have to do the first spray because I'm so jealous. Normally, I love tackling anything with my paint sprayer, but this particular project, there's a lot of walls to paint, so I'm glad I'm not the one doing it. Do it like that, left to right. All right. You got, got our, this. We got our work cut out for us. They're going to do just fine with those sprayers, but it does seem a little cruel zipping the zipper up and us leaving. Oh, well. OK. <laughs> Neil and Whitney work into the evening and get two coats of paint on the walls. The next morning, Neil starts on coat number three. While Neil's finishing up the third coat in the living room, Whitney and I are going to apply a slightly different paint to the shelves and the cabinet doors outside. So we actually decided to do a brighter white in a semi-gloss finish so that your eyes look at it as a standalone piece. While the shelves dry, Chelsea and Whitney begin assembling light fixtures. Whitney just couldn't choose which light fixture she wanted by the pictures online, so she ordered two. We're going to put them together and see which one she chooses. With painting complete, we're finally ready to remove the tape. So, you know, painting really should be your thing. Uh, that CPA thing, do that on, on like a, on the weekends <laughs> and then paint all the time because this is your future here. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. Never going to happen. It looks great, but now, now to be able to peel this tape away mm -hmm. and to see the stain behind it, that's what you've been waiting for. So ready. Get okay. rid of the green. So what we're going to have to do, let me show you. As we pull the tape off, I start to see the brown, and it looks actually more rich now. What do you think? I'm excited. OK. We've got a lot. You all know how much tape you put up here. <laughs> oh, yeah. So now it all has to come down. I'm having a little trouble here. So you're trying to push the tape down into the bag, but because it's tape, it was sticking right. to the bag. Yeah, it made a little more of a challenge because the tape ball was sticking to the inside of the garbage can. <laughs> Thank you for the so, visual representation. But you saw who won. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get mad. <laughs> now, to do something about those red bricks. When the lime wash first came out of the can, it was very thick and looked like clay. We weren't sure how well this was going to work, but once you dilute it with water, it was just like working with paint. So Neil, have you ever seen any of this, this uh, lime washing stuff? I haven't. I'm interested to see, though. Yeah, neither. I just want to learn. All right, so we're applying the solution in the direction of the bricks. Wow, so I'm like one of my old school teachers. 
That was the point. You, you wait until it's like dry-ish, and then you go back and wipe it off. Did you know that if you don't like it, you can wash it off with a water hose in three days? Well, I don't have a water hose in the house, so we better like it. <laughs> <laughs> sure wish I had a glass of iced tea. Yeah, maybe some popcorn. A little popcorn. refreshment popcorn. for you. Yeah. You think it'd be too much if we started a fire? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Well, this was kind of exciting, but not so much anymore. Yeah, it's kind of like watching paint dry. Watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we tackle the blue? I can help you out on painting the blue. OK, let's All get right. to work. There was a little trial and error with wiping the lime wash off, trying to see what kind of pattern you want to show in the brick. I think this circular motion kind of like wipes it into the brick, into all of its yeah. little Horse. grooves and things. So once you found the good wipe on, wipe off scenario, we were good. <laughs> now I'm gonna watch paint dry. <laughs> I just wanna sit. <laughs> All right guys, get to work. Dad, uh-oh, let me check your pulse, you're painting. <laughs> Are you okay? Check your temperature, what's gotten into you? I didn't think you were serious. <laughs> I won't be here long. I succumb to the peer pressure. You should never do that, Dad. <sighs> we begin the next day by hanging the television and making the light fixture decision. OK. Oh, see, I like that. Definitely that one. I like the lines. And we're like lightening and brightening the room, so maybe we should get a little bit more fancy. Oh, lighter and fancier. Bingo. Now we're in the home stretch. We can route the wiring for the TV and install the crown molding to conceal it and beef up the face of the mantle. Once we install the cabinet doors and touch up some paint, we'll be ready to put this room back together. This 40-year-old house has curb appeal, a great location, and plenty of interior space, but the dark dated den just wasn't working for Neil and Whitney's young family. The stained wood absorbed light like a sponge, and the details of the room screamed 1970. By painting the ceiling and most of the walls, we brightened the room enormously while preserving the character of the detailed woodwork. The new light fixture is not only more modern, it also provides more light. And the washed finish on the bricks is brighter and more modern as well. Plus, the thicker mantle seems to better suit the room, while the blue accents in the bookshelves add a little drama. While Neil and Whitney put in a lot of hours on this project, the materials totaled less than $900, and the results speak for themselves. It made a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. I'm so glad that we did keep the trim, the wooden colors. We could keep some of that character that I think the room already had naturally, but it's definitely lighter and brighter and feels more like a living room space for the family to gather versus a dungeon. This is a project I said I was going to tackle the minute we bought the house, but the reality is, is we've lived here six months and I haven't touched it. And now seeing everything we've done here with the help of today's homeowner, I don't know if we could have done it on our own. We would have been living in a library forever. <laughs> You know, on just about every remodeling project that you may do at your home, there's a little apprehension, but maybe there's a little bit more when you're tackling a beautifully crafted room like we did here. Well, here's what you need to do. Make sure you do your homework. Think about how you want that room to look when it's all completely finished and go for it. And hopefully it'll turn out just like this one did, exceeding all expectations. Hey, I'm Danny Lifford. I hope you enjoyed seeing this transformation here on today's homeowner. Hope I see you next week. We're done painting! Forever! Forever! Check the lens, see if there's anything on it. I can't wait. Can't wait to see that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Is suncomation a uh, real word? Be sure to join us next week when we create some inexpensive curb appeal for a home that's over 50 years old. You know, sometimes when we Try to put words together. It just doesn't work out. Okay. All right, need a jig, please.
<laughs> succamation is not a word. Succamation. No. It's succumbing. It's the act of succumbing. Succamation. 